Are vaginal ozone insufflations a systemic treatment? Is it possible to treat things like a cold or even joint pain by letting ozone gas flow through the vagina? I'm Paula, the crazy ozone lady from thepowerofozone.com and I was born with a vagina and I do ozone therapy, which makes me a natural born vaginal ozone insufflations expert. I think you better strap yourself in because there are more of this type of bad jokes coming in this video. But if you prefer to receive them via email instead of listening to them, then just subscribe to my newsletter by going to thepowerofozone.com slash news. Now let's go back to ozonating your Vaginal insufflations are part of ozone therapy, which just like rectal ozone insufflations can be easily performed at home. Yet, unlike rectal ozone treatments, they are rarely ever discussed by medical ozone experts. And if they are, then only as a local treatment. So, for example, Dr. Renate fieban hensler a world-renowned ozone researcher, doesn't mention vaginal insufflations in her books at all, not even as a local treatment. Professor Velio Bocci, the late Italian ozone maverick who published several seminal, pun intended, books on ozone therapy, only mentions the vaginal route as a topical and local treatment for things like bacterial or fungal vaginitis. Dr. David Brownstein, another medical doctor, who practices ozone therapy mentions vaginal and rectal insufflations in the same paragraph, but says that only the rectal route is a valid alternative to intravenous treatments. Dr. Frank Schoenberger seems to be a bit more generous, and it appears that he suggests that vaginal insufflations could be effective for any type of infection. Although I find his book is so poorly written that it's really not quite clear what he's referring to. And at the same time, he makes some bizarre recommendations and says that vaginal ozone treatments should be performed only in the prone position, meaning with the patient lying face down. On top of that, he says that for some reason only a male urethral catheter can be used, which is also not correct. Dr. Robert Rowan used to discourage vaginal insufflations altogether, saying that there was a risk of gas embolism based on a case study which had nothing to do with vaginal ozone insufflations or any type of ozone treatment. I'm not sure whether he changed his mind on the topic or if he still stands by it. So judging from what published ozone doctors tell us, it's clear that whereas rectal insufflations are regarded as a valid and nearly equivalent treatment to intravenous ozone therapy, something I don't agree with, by the way, vaginal insufflations are deemed to be either an exclusively local treatment or are completely ignored. So it comes as a big surprise that the Spain-based International Scientific Committee of Ozone Therapy had this to say about vaginal ozone insufflations in their 2020 edition of the Madrid Declaration on Ozone Therapy. Quote, Considering the speed of capillary flow as well as the fact that the vagina is a white, clean, moist and well-vascularized receptacle, vaginal insufflation is a systemic route and is even a more effective route than major autohemotherapy and rectal ozone insufflation. End quote. So they are saying that not only are vaginal insufflations a powerful systemic ozone treatment, but that they are even more powerful than major autohemotherapy, which is the standard intravenous ozone treatment, and also more effective than rectal ozone insufflations. This makes them the first authoritative voice in the ozone therapy world, taking a fundamentally different non-seminal stance on vaginal insufflations which shows that there are many often opposing views in the ozone therapy world. So how do they back up their claims? What makes them come to this drastically different conclusion? One which, by the way, they did not support only five years ago in their previous edition of the Madrid Declaration. Well, they refer to a number of studies, but all of those studies deal only with local vaginal pathologies, like for example, dystrophic disease of the vulva or inflammatory disease in female genital organs or bacterial vaginosis and colpitis, which is inflammation of the vagina. Another one is dealing with diseases of lower female genital organs and so on. These are all local vaginal conditions treated with local vaginal ozone treatments. 
So it's not clear how this International Scientific Committee arrived from those studies to the conclusion that the vaginal ozone insufflations are a systemic treatment. Since in order to be able to say that vaginal ozone insufflations are a systemic treatment, one would need to perform experiments on patients with non-local conditions and treat them with vaginal ozone therapy. So, for example, one could take groups of patients with, let's say, brain inflammation, encephalitis, or multiple sclerosis, or sinus congestion, or shoulder pain due to arthritis, or hepatitis, and then treat those patients with vaginal ozone insufflations to determine if this would have any positive impact on their symptoms or not. Unfortunately, nothing of that sort is provided by Dr. Schwartz, the head researcher behind the Madrid Declaration. So it seems like no such study has ever been conducted. Still, Dr. Schwartz and other Spanish ozone experts maintain that vaginal ozone insufflations are more potent than intravenous ozone. Now, although it's not clear how they come to this understanding, and although they don't provide any scientific evidence for their assertions, I still believe that they're onto something here. Since just because there are no studies to back up the claims, it does not mean that the claims are not true. It just means that so far no one has taken the time to conduct such a study. So yes, in spite of the lack of evidence, I still believe that they are right. Vaginal ozone insufflations are indeed a potent form of ozone therapy, much more so than rectal insufflations. The reason why I believe this is my own experience and those of other natural-born vaginal experts. So, for example, a few years ago, I was able to stop a beginning cold within 10 minutes of doing a vaginal ozone insufflation. Another time, a pain in my right knee disappeared after a vaginal insufflation of 20 to 30 minutes. Something which completely surprised me. I was doing the vaginal insufflation for something completely unrelated and noticed only afterwards that as an added bonus, the knee pain went away as well. More similar stories like mine can be found on my website. So for example, Joyce, who is a member of the Ozone Group on Facebook, reported that she's been successfully treating a bad left knee, a recurring sciatica pain and lower back pain with vaginal insufflations which she says work for her just as well as local ozone injections. Dr. Heather O'Leary, who suffers from rheumatoid arthritis, reported that she experienced a lessening of chronic neck pain after doing daily vaginal ozone insufflations. Another member said she saw a reduction of tumors on her adrenals and kidneys thanks to both vaginal and rectal ozone insufflations. You can find more similar reports in the Ozone Group on Facebook especially from women reporting success with different systemic infections after doing vaginal ozone insufflations in combination with other ozone treatments. Now, why would vaginal insufflations work as a systemic treatment? What would be the possible underlying mechanism? How would the ozone introduced into the vagina make its way into a knee or the neck? A possible explanation for this is also provided by Dr. Schwartz, where she says that because of the capillary flow and the fact that the vagina is well vascularized, meaning endowed with many blood vessels, and because it's moist. We know that a moist skin surface is needed for the ozone to be absorbed. The ozone reacts with bodily fluids, which produces beneficial ozone byproducts like lipid oxidation products, hydrogen peroxide, and other reactive oxygen species, which are then transported through the blood and lymph fluid throughout the body. On top of that, the vagina, unlike the colon, is clean, she points out. There are no feces leftovers with which the ozone could react and produce gases or some other unwelcome byproducts. So let's list all the advantages of doing vaginal rather than rectal ozone insufflations. Number one, you're not dealing with feces. This is a big plus, no mess. Number two, vaginal insufflations are easier to perform. You just stick the catheter inside, turn on the ozone generator, and that's it. Number three, they are less risky, since there is nothing that can rupture. The gas just easily escapes the way it came in. Number four, vaginal ozone insufflations can be performed without problems in the continuous fashion, 
meaning by letting the gas flow constantly and directly from the machine instead of first filling a bag or a syringe. Number five, the catheter or vaginal kit can be just rinsed out and reused, whereas with rectal insufflations, it's recommended to use a fresh catheter each time. Number six, there is less danger of disturbing an important biome, since the vaginal flora is not as critical to the function of your body as the gut biome, which is vital for proper digestion. The vaginal flora can be also much easier repopulated since it's much easier to access. So vaginal ozone insufflations are easier, less messy, less risky, potentially more beneficial than rectal insufflations or even intravenous ozone routes. Sounds like a no-brainer to me. So if you are currently using rectal insufflations to treat some systemic condition, switch to vaginal insufflations instead. It's possible you will see better results. Give it a try and tell us how it goes. And please describe everything in great detail. I think our male audience will appreciate this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Please don't take anything in this video as medical advice if there's something wrong with your vajayjay then just go and see your doctor.